Hi, I'm Joe Karras from Pole Fishing Magazine, and you join me today in absolutely freezing cold tunnel bound farm. The weather's miserable, but luckily for you, I've got 10 great little tips that should help you with your F1 fishing. Right, my first tip for you when it comes to winter F1 fishing is float choice. Now, there's loads of great floats on the market, but for me, I've used these Mick Wilkinson F1 Slims for five or six years now, and to be honest, I think they're absolutely perfect. Now, you may notice that I've chosen the one with the carbon stem. Now, before I used to have the wires and the carbons in my box, but to be honest with you, I've done away with all the wires now and just use these carbon versions. For me, they take a bit more shot, which I like, and I like to fish on the drop a lot, whether that's with pellets, maggots, or bread. So for me, that carbon just helps, you know, keep everything nice. You may notice if you look really closely, I've actually thickened the tip up slightly with some paint. I've got the Census um, Fluoro float paint, and I've just put a, a thin layer on each, you know, gone round the bristle and given it one stroke of the brush, and it just thickens the bristle up nicely. So if I do want to dot that float down, it just hangs there in the surface fill nicely. Nice little tip. I carry them in 4x10 up to 4x16, and that pretty much covers me for all depths at this fishery. Right, sticking with the theme of rigs and floats and bits like that, I just want to talk you through the actual rig themselves. Now, I'm a big believer in fishing light floats and light strung out rigs. It's, it goes hand in hand with maggot fishing, which I like to do personally here. But more recently, I've actually been using the same rigs for pellet fishing. Now, a lot of people may like turn their nose up at that because a lot of it nowadays is having a short hook length and a tight bulk bombing that bait down to the fish but for me I think the fish have wised up to all that so I actually prefer a more strung out shotting pattern as you can see I've got a 4 by 10 float on and this you know it's probably four foot deep with a 4 by 10 float it seems a bit light and I've just got strung out number 12 shot down the bottom of my rig a lot of people are worried that they're not going to see the fish you know see the bite but I don't tend to worry about that. I, I, I kind of think once the fish has got it in its mouth and moves off, you're going to see it regardless of the shot. And I know that on the underwater footage that we shot with Lee Carey on the canal, the droppers that he used didn't actually make any difference to what registered on the float. So for me, a nice light dropper gives me that nice slow fall of the hook bait, which to me is more important than bite indication. So just give that a try. Nice light droppers, 12s and 11s, and give it a try with your fishing. Right, one of the things that has confused me in the past, and I know it confuses, confuses readers and, and viewers of this YouTube channel, is what elastics to use for winter F1 fishing. Now, I've been a strong advocate of using number six elastics in, the, in recent years, and it's beautiful, it really is nice, but of late, I've been using these short F1 kits for all of my F1 fishing, and to be honest with you, a number six elastic works perfect in these, but, there is a downside, there's not quite enough elastic in my opinion. So what I have changed to is a Dura Hollow 8, which is a beautiful stretchy soft elastic. In, a, in one of these F1 kits, it's absolutely perfect. It's got enough poke to set the hook, but it'll stretch for miles. One thing I do do, because obviously F1 kits are a little bit too short if you're on a deeper swim, I actually combine it with a short four. So as you can see, I can pop that on there, and this top kit is now the same length as my normal top kits. The advantages are that the elastics just seem to work better in these short kits, so I prefer that setup rather than a normal top kit. Now, winter F1 fishing is all about accuracy. You know, it's rare that you're feeding with a catapult. You might throw a few maggots in, but largely, using pole pots is an absolute must. Now, there's a couple, you know, there's loads of different ones out there, but for me, these two cover, cover my options. Firstly, we've got a pot that I came up with a few years ago. It's one that John Arthur actually nicknamed the Cat's Cradle. And what it is, it's just a matrix toss pot that I've adapted by drilling a series of holes all the way around it. And I've weaved elastic in there. I don't know if you can see that. And what it does, it's just, I use this for maggots. You can pop four or five maggots in there and ship it out. And some of the banks are a little bit awkward, in, you know, at Tunnelbound Farm. So having this, this sort of elastic sort of gauze, if you like, on the top, just stops the maggots from bouncing out. And then when I get to the swim, I can pot them in. It's only a little thing, but I find this works better than a lid and a hole sort of setup. So the cat's cradle is my choice for uh, maggot fishing. And then when it comes to pellets, I'm a, a, you know, I'm a firm believer in using the age old bottle caps from uh, you know from drinks bottles for me they just hold a nice little amount of pellets i'm not going to overfeed my swim because i can't physically get too many pellets in there all i've done i've got 
hole on each side so my top kit passes through it and I've got four little holes at the bottom which stops a vacuum being created and the bait will just fall out. So them two little pots, ideal for winter F1 fishing, this one for maggots, this one for pellets, job done. Right, a big thing that you need to get your head around in winter fishing for, you know, for F1s on a, on a venue such as this, as you can see, there's absolutely loads of lovely looking fish holding areas and it's where to fish. Because obviously five hours is a long time, but when you sat waiting 10, 15 minutes for an odd bite, time soon you know, disappears. So you can't have too many areas on the go, but you still need to explore. So what I like to do, I like to do it quite logically and think about what I'm trying to do. So quite often I'll start short just to get a feeling for what's happening with the peg. Is it gonna be a day when the fish respond to some bait? Is it a day when Dobbin's gonna pay off? You know, if I don't get a bite short, I can, I can think that, you know, the bait they're probably not gonna respond to any bait. So then my next move would be to dob around the various features in my swim. As you can see here, I've got plant pots, I've got roots, I've got lilies, I've got all sorts of features here that I'd expect to dob and catch fish. But the key is to never plunder an area. So always leave yourself somewhere new to go. You don't need to feed those areas at the start, but say I catch some fish off this for an hour, this lily pad in front of me, and then it dies. I've got no hesitation in just starting again, totally for fresh. I've not put any bait in again, say that pot there. And then as soon as that dies, I'll move on to the next set of lilies. And then maybe later on, I'll maybe try down the edge or try to this pot here. You know, it's all about keeping the fish moving and moving to where you think they've backed off to. You've generally got a ball of F1s in front of you in winter here at Tunnel Barn Farm and it's where they move to next, to where you need to be fishing next. Don't prime the swims up, feed them as you go and you won't go far wrong. Right, the next tip to talk about is probably the most in vogue method of the moment and that's bread dobbing. Now, it's a method I've had a lot of success with and I know my teammate Jamie Hughes wins matches every week on it. There's loads to it and it's an absolutely deadly way of you know, making the most of your swim in winter. Bait can destroy a peg in winter. You know, the fish, are, they're, they're not feeding and the introduction of bait can spook fish. So the art of bread dobbing is actually locating where the fish are and presenting you know, a nice seven mil piece of bread or an eight mil piece, whatever you prefer, right in front of those fish. So, as I mentioned before, I've got, this peg has got loads of features in it. This is a, it's a beautiful peg for dobbing right here. And I'd imagine that fish will be holed up in all these like little, like little areas. And what I do, I present a nice little rig. What I use is a 4x10 Malman Speedy. I cut it down slightly. I cut the stem down and I cut the bristle down, you know, so it's a nice compact float. And I'll set that, that, that rig probably 8 to 10 inches off the bottom. I'll have just three number 12s down the line and it'll just slowly sink, the, that, you know, that bread will just slowly flutter down ready for an F1 or a carp to take it. It's an absolutely deadly method and it's one of those things that it, for some reason it gets a lot of negative press. I don't know why because it's, you know, it's deadly. It's a great cheap way of catching fish and to be honest, if you're on the right peg, it is unbeatable. Give Dobbin a go this winter, you won't be disappointed. Right, a nice little twist on pellet fishing for you to try is combining pellets with ground bait. Now, for some reason at this venue, it's always been a case that ground bait, not gonna say it put fish off in winter, but you seem to foul up fish, and it just wasn't the one. Neat pellets has always been the one. Now, for some reason this year, I don't know if it's because the water's clearer or the fishing's a bit harder, but a little bit of ground bait combined with your pellet seems to be working nicely. Now, all I use is good old Dynamite Swim Stim Black. Now, this is a favourite from years ago when we used to fish at a, uh, a venue called the Oaks at Sesse. And what we used to do there, we used to feed a line down the track with small bits of this, just, you know, the, the bottle cap that I told you earlier, and we used to tap it in all day long and then go on it in the last hour and catch really well. All it is, I've just mixed the ground bait up as normal, so it's nice and fluffy, and then added pellets so that it's a rough, you know, it's a 50-50 mix really. And I'm just feeding little caps of it, you know, that, that water bottle every time I go in, and it just seems to be drawing them in. I think the extra bit of attraction and a bit of cloud from the ground bait is helping in that clear water. And then there's obviously just a few pellets because even a cap full of this with that ground bait is not a lot of bait. You know, it's only a dozen pellets or so. Another advantage is it draws a lot of other fish in as well. You're catching bonus skimmers, odd roach, you know, odd carp even. 
just fish that you don't generally catch on a straightforward pellet approach. So with the fishing being harder, this is something that's really worked well for me this winter. Right, obviously with your pellet fishing, it's not really the time of year where hard pellets score for me. I much prefer using a soft expander. And to, to fish expanders, I like to have two sizes with me. I like to have a two mil and a four mil. Now, as you can see there, I've got a nice little mix. I don't do a lot. That's To be fair, that's probably enough to do two sessions, but we always do a few too many. So all I do, I prepare them in a trusty pellet pump. A lot of people do this, um, you know, just soaking them and then using the hook to, to sink them. It's not for me that, it's a bit faffy. I, I'd just rather them sink, to be honest with you. So the two mil pellets are actually these Bag and Winter Expanders. Now, I don't know if you've seen these, but I've, you know, I've written a glowing review of them and spoke, you know, very highly of them on Facebook and whatnot. They're a, they're a beautiful pale colour. You know, expanders of yesteryear always used to be like that, and these winter expanders have gone back to that colour. I really like it. I just think in the clear water, it's a nice pale visual thing that the fish can pick out. Same goes for my, for my you know, for my four mills. These are actually from some four mills from years ago, and I managed to keep them nice and dry out the way at home, and I just, you know, I only pump just enough for a session because I don't want to, you know, run out of them. But they're again a lovely light colour, and that's that's probably the bit of advice I'd like to give you is, whatever expander you choose, when it comes to winter fishing, I think a nice light expander will outscore a darker one every time. Right, a big part of my rigs is the use of back shots. Now, they're not to everyone's taste, but. I think a lot of F1 anglers now use back shots and I think it's something that you need to seriously consider trying if you haven't already. Basically, it helps eliminate any sort of bow above you, between your pole tip and your float, which can, in the winter you get a lot of skim and that loop caused by not having a back shot on can just drag your float through unnaturally and it's just something you can get rid of with the help of these back shot. Now there's two little ways of doing it. Firstly, a bulk or a big shot, something like a number six or a number four, or in this case, like I've got a bulk of number eights. Now this creates a nice L shape between the pole tip and the float. And it's my choice when I'm, you know, maggot fishing or, you know, the wind's bad. I can use that big bulk to really anchor, you know, just dip it under the surface and that L shape just holds my float rock steady. Lovely way to fish that, and you can get away with using lighter floats than you would do if you didn't have that on there. The second way of doing it is something that Steve Ringer showed me, and I know it's very, very popular, and that's having a string, a string of back shots above the float. Now, this is my preferred choice when I'm pellet fishing, because I think that's a lot more direct, you're trying to stay on top of your float, and I just think that these number eight shots spread out helps keep a lovely tight line between your pole tip and your float, and you can be dead direct when the float dips under. It's a lovely way of doing it. If you was to use a longer line, I could even put four or maybe five of them strung out back shots, but it just really helps with presentation. I think back shots are a must, to be honest with you, so you definitely need to give them a go.